in the past, God spoke to our forefathers, to the prophets, at many times and in various ways. Last days. God was specific enough for us to let us know that you God was generous enough to send Jesus because Isaiah the prophet informs us This child, incredible things will be for. The great news this Christmas Day is.
yourself known in your Son, Jesus. Redeemer of the world. Christ the Lord. 
this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as had been told. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. in the inn. 
This is our text. Did you all get what you wanted for Christmas? Excellent. I'd like to hear that. That means things have been going pretty well, at least in the Tiaden household. You may have gotten all sorts of different gifts that you may be thinking of. It could be the gift of a big wheel. It could be the gift of a pony. It could be the gift of a ring. It could be the gift of whatever it was that you were looking for. Personally, this morning, I was looking for the gift of a voice that was doing nice. I did not get that this morning. When we look at the gifts of what our Lord has given to us, often we're looking for that perfect gift. We've been given the most perfect gift. When we look at our family, how much time do we spend looking for the perfect gift for those in our family? We go to this store, we go to that store, or we go to this online place, we go to that online place, we search Google all over the place, going to find just the perfect gift. And our hope is that when that person opens up that gift, they open up the gift, and you get eyes that can come as big as saucers. They just look at this. Wow! Look what the what I have gotten. This is awesome and incredible. We search so much for the perfect gift, and we spend a lot of time on it. But you look at that baby Jesus, and how much time did God spend in getting that gift together for us? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, Adam and Eve. And then what came into the world? Sin came into the world. The incredible relationship God intended with us and Him got broken and torn asunder. And as soon as that happened, then God started getting things ready for the perfect gift. Right at that moment, God came to Adam, God came to Eve, and told them, I will send a promised Savior. He told it to Adam and Eve. He told it to Abraham. He told it to Isaac, to Jacob, to Joseph, all the way down. He told it to David. He told it to Solomon. He told it to Isaiah, to Malachi, to Micah, to Amos. We can go all the way down, century upon century, millennia upon millennia. He was preparing everything for this gift. That's what makes this gift so awesome and incredible. It was not something that I found out at the hardware store, so here I got it for my wife. And no, honey, I didn't get you something from the hardware store. But this is something that God took care, took everything, and gave of himself for us sending His Son, sending His one and only Son into this world that we might belong to Him. He set everything up. He set up the Roman Empire. He set up all the people going forward. He set up the census. He set up the taxation. He set up Bethlehem. He set every step of the way up. So the Virgin Mary, when all these things would happen, would take all of these incredible things and ponder them upon her heart. That's the kind of care that God took and planned for our gift, for what He has for us. But far too often we have our own plans, right? We have our own ways of going forward. Last night at the 5 o'clock service, and there were a few of you here that were there for that. My voice was going. So I quickly, during the service, went out and grabbed the handheld mic. Because I had the perfect plan. I had everything set up just as I thought it was going to be. We get near the end of the service. And I'd have all the children come forward. And this was my plan. The children would come forward. And they'd come up. And I'd tell them, now let's pretend to be shepherds. And then everybody would nod their head, yes. And then 
I tell them, now look at what God has just told us. He's just told us we have this incredible gift, this incredible thing. Now if you're told, here's a gift, are you going to go to sleep or go to the gift? Kids will say, go to the gift, right? Absolutely. So then we're going to wander over here. Is there a major here? Let's find this. And then we would wander over there. And then we'd go and say, look, there's a manger. And actually the kids did their part perfectly. And then we went over to the manger. And then what do we do when we come to the king of kings? And all the children knelt down before the king of kings, the lords of lords, the prince of peace. Because there is the gift that's given to us. That was my plan. But we know what happened with my voice. For those of you that were here last night, I even had the quick idea of putting the mic up and have that. And guess what was not working well that night? The mic. And so even with my voice not doing this, I was still trying to, and then I start talking and all of a sudden I'm not talking at all because nothing is coming out of there. The kids hear me, but everybody else hears about half of what's going on. That was my plan. And what happened to my plan? It didn't happen. But what did God do through us? God, despite our failings, despite the failing of my mic, despite the failing of my voice, despite all of the failings, God still made his thing happen. God still made his thing as he gathered us together. There was a church that was gathered together on Christmas Day. And I told this story before, but I like it. And they had this beautiful Christmas tree of poinsettias. And so you had all these red poinsettias, beautiful Christmas tree, right up there next to the altar. And then, about halfway through the service, just after the sermon, something happened. And that big Christmas tree of poinsettias started to wobble and started to move. And you can guess what then started to happen. The tree came crashing on down. And everybody was quiet. But now, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do? All our plans are not what we thought they were. All of our plans are the perfect Christmas, the perfect gift, the perfect everything. It was now no longer there. There was dirt. There were leaves. There was stuff all over the place. Of course, some of the ushers came up quick and moved some of the plants over. But what now? And then came time to receive that next gift. And everybody came up, went through the dirt, went through the mess, went through the mess of our life, came up to the altar rail. And there at the altar rail, received the gift of the body and the blood that was shed for us on that cross. The body and the blood that first came into this world, born of the Virgin Mary, born in Bethlehem, born where God knew it needed to happen. And so, so often we look for the perfect gift, the perfect plan, the perfect way to make everything happen. And our lives are not perfect. Our actions are not perfect. But on this incredible holy Christmas day, this is where we get to take that time and look at what is perfect. Emmanuel, God with us, has come into the world. That is the perfect gift. That is the perfect plan. And as we come forward and we receive the bread and the wine, the body and the blood, there as well, we receive God's perfect plan for the forgiveness of our sins. Praise the Lord. His plan, not mine and not ours. Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you sent your one and only Son to this world, whose birth we celebrate this day, that you sent him here, that we might believe, that we might have faith, and that we might be yours now and forever. We pray, yeah. hear us, wonderful Counselor. We ask, Lord, that you'll be with all those who are traveling, who are moving, be with all our brothers and sisters who are worshiping throughout this vast world. We ask that you will keep them safe, that you will bless them, especially on this holy day. For those that are sick and hurting, we lift up into your hands. We ask that you will be with Millie, Bev, Carol, Helen, Vern, Peggy, Elaine, Agnes, Nora, Hikia, Herman, Marge, Shelley, Gladys, Lou, and Phyllis. Watch over Jackie, Art, Lorraine, Yvonne, Jean, and Andrew. We pray. Hear us, wonderful Counselor. We ask, Heavenly Father, they would be with all those who have lost loved ones. Especially lift up the family of Nathan Widener. Watch over them. Grant them a special measure of your Holy Spirit, that they might know of your presence, that they might know of your love, and guide them in these days, weeks, and months ahead. We pray. Hear us, wonderful Counselor. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would watch over all of those that you have gathered together as your people. Be with your church here on this world. Help us, Lord, as we do on this day, to share of what you have done, to shout aloud, and to sing in praise of all the incredible things that you have given. We pray, hear us, wonderful Counselor, and as we remember this day of your sending of your one and only Son, born of Mary, we also thank you for all that Jesus went on to do, all of his ministry, all of his life, his perfect life for us, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and all the things that he has done, that by our faith that you have given, we are yours now, and we are yours forever. We pray, hear us, wonderful Counselor. Into your hands, O Lord, come into all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray, and the words of the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all of us. Also with you. You may be seated.
Sing our closing hymn, but we are also called on to do. Go, tell it.